So in this video, we're going to discuss looptrons and how to navigate them, how to read them, just a general overview. Um, I must warn you, firstly, that the drawing that I'm going to use has been taken off the internet because obviously I couldn't take one from the place of work that I'm at because it's obviously sensitive information. Um, but we'll just go through it. Um, the first thing I want to say is that all this information that's up here, I'm highlighting now, this kind of information would not normally be located here in a loop drawn. This kind of information would normally be located down here. Down here you would normally have the tag number, which in this situation would be, um, it's obviously PT73 and PY73, so the tag number of the instruments is P and the system number is 73, so it would be P73. Um, and then you would have all your revision numbers and your controlled copy signs and all that kind of thing would be located down in this area. Um, it wouldn't be up here. I think this has been some kind of learning drawn. But we're just going to mainly focus on the, the things that are within this area here because this is the main thing that you have to worry about when looking at a drawn. So we'll just start on the left hand side. So on the left hand side here you have your field process area. It is normal and usual and common for all instruments on a loop drawing to be, all field instruments to be located on the left hand side of the drawing. Very rarely would it be the other way around, although I have seen it, but, but very rarely. So you have PT73, and this drawing it tells you what that means. Normally it would be taken for granted that PT is a pressure transmitter, but down here you've got PT73 pressure transmitter. You've got an H and an L here, which normally would be your high and your low side of a pressure transmitter. Again, you wouldn't have that normally on a loop drawn. But if it's a pressure transmitter, this would, the H and the L would tend to suggest it's a differential pressure transmitter. And normally a differential pressure transmitter is DPT, not just PT. But anyway, we'll let that go. So we've got the positive and the negative this will be your 24 volt supply to your pressure transmitter and it also tells you here that the range of the pressure transmitter is 0 to 50 psi. Now it's got an arrow going up there that tends to suggest that it means rising but if it's a pressure transmitter it will be sending a signal whether it's rising or falling. I don't know if that means that any alarms come off will be in the high direction. They're just We don't normally get these kind of arrows. I think as again this drawing has been for some specific reason, it's the only half decent one I could find. Anyway, so we've got red here and black here. This denotes the colour of your wires. This dashed line is your wires. And this line up and down here now delineates that you're going into a different area. Obviously this was the field process area, which means it's outside somewhere, normally, unless it's in a module. Um, then now, after this line, we're into a field panel JB25. So it's a field panel and it's a JB. JB means junction box. So it's a box and it's number 25. Within JB25, it is on TB52, which is terminal block 52. Um, and again, you've got your red wire coming in, your black wire coming in. And on terminal block 52, they are on terminals 1 for red and 2 for black. Um, and it comes out of these terminal blocks. Red still coming out from one. Uh, two still coming out from black. Your cable number here is PT73. Your cable number here is 4PR1. Cable 4PR1. It just means PR1 just means pair one when you're talking about a cable. So this line again means you're going into a different area. Here it tells us we're going into a DCS cabinet, so a distributed control system cabinet. So that'll normally be a Marshalling cabinet back somewhere in your main control room. Uh, so again, in, within that cabinet, in your main control room, you're going into another terminal block, TB80. Then within, within TB80, you're going into terminals 11 and 12. Then you come out of those terminals 11 and 12. And you go on to card 4, channel 6 of your analog input PLC card. So this is an analog input PLC card. It's a 4 to 20 milliamp. It tells you down here, pressure transmitter, rose mount, 
input range and pressure is 0 to 50 psi and your output is 4 to 20 milliamps. So when your output of your device is a 4 to 20 milliamp, the input of your PLC card is also 4 to 20 milliamp. So this PLC card will take a 4 to 20 milliamp signal which will be fed into a digital controller within your within your logic. It's a Delta V system, so it's so it's you know it's not getting done by some old pneumatic controller or something. It's obviously all all the controllers are internal to the to the logic. Your analog input card sends the pressure out to the controller. The controller will decide what response it wants to make to that pressure, and it'll give an output signal to card six, channel six analog output card which will then give a 4 to 20 milliamp output along these lines 29 on terminal block 8 30 on terminal block 80 again on red and black respectively back to the same junction box that we're in already because it's still up here it hasn't changed same terminal block out of there on terminals 15 and 16 and into PY73. Now what's PY73? PY73 is an I2P transducer. Again, normal loop drones will not have these descriptions here. You will be expected to understand what a PY is by the time you're reading this drone. PY it says I2P transducer. I would call it an I2P converter. And it is converting I, which is a current signal, 4 to 20 milliamp signal, into a P signal, which is a pneumatic signal. So P stands for pneumatic, I is current. This loop drawn shows a pneumatic air line, which is which is denoted by the dashed lines. That tells you it's pneumatic line, and it's showing a pneumatic signal out to the valve. Now, a normal loop drawn would never show you a pneumatic signal. That would be on a P and ID drawn. I'll do a video on what how to read a P and ID diagram. Um, but this one again, it's it's probably showing you that just to just to highlight the the use of the IP converter for people that don't know. This S down here, AS, that is an air supply. So you're getting an air supply of 20 psi into the IP converter, and it and it, when it gets a four milliamp signal, it tells you down here the IP transducer is a fissure and the output range of the IP transducer is 3 to 15 psi. That's telling you that the output of this IP converter is either 3 psi or 15 psi. Now it tells you down here that the valve is a fail open valve. So that means when there's no va there's no air on this valve, when it's air failed, the valve will be open. So the 3 to 15 psi range tells you that the 3 the 3 PSI is the 4 milliamps. So that would be when you've got 3 PSI on here, the valve will be open. When you've got 15 PSI on, the valve will be closed. So you can get an understanding of all that from this drawn. Uh, I'll take off some of the stuff that I've put on there, clear things up a little bit. Again, all the information that you've got on Nistron isn't normally you've normally what you've normally got is as I said before, all the information at the top here at the top here is normally down here. Down here. And you've always got three sections here. You've got one section which is the field, the other section which is the intermediate connection, and the final location here, which is back in your main control room or your LER or your local equipment room or whatever it's called on your specific site. But this is the layout, so you've got the instruments in the field, the interconnection box and the final connections where, you, where your controller is kept. So really, there's not a lot more to it. Um, instrument technicians or instrument control technicians, P and I, uh, Loop drawn would be the first port of call if you get a, a fault to the inst to say this this valve here you've got an issue. First thing you would do is get the loop drawn out so you can orientate yourself. You can see where these things are. You can have a look in the and say, well, this this IP converter has been changed five times in the past. This is this is a normally a usual culprit or any one of. So I mean, sometimes after these cards, you've got. Uh, barriers but we won't we won't go in, into too much depth here this is basically just an orientation to how to navigate these drones um 
if anybody's got any further questions or you want me to clarify on something that I've said or you think something I've said is wrong, please add it in the comments and I will attempt to reply. I hope that's helped somebody. Thanks for that.